So fourth turning. Last week you had the three turnings, you explored those with Vince. And a big difference here with the fourth turning is that the fourth turning is still emerging. We are living a fourth turning. In that sense, it's not known the way that the other three turnings are. You know, hundreds and thousands of years has not passed to where we can say with certainty what a fourth turning is. So partly this training that we're all doing together is an exploration of one version, one expression of that. And so in my talk today, you know, partly I'm going to be inviting in inquiry and wondering um, versus saying exactly how it is. Um, and in our discussion afterwards, that'll be some space to, you know, further dive into that inquiry together. So when I contemplated this fourth turning, uh, given that we're going to be practicing so much more in, in the weeks to come, I was challenged with figuring out how to talk about this in a very short period of time. You know, Vince covering the three turnings in 20 minutes was pretty impressive. <laughs> it's not easy to do. That's a lot of history and teachings and practice. And even a fourth turning, how big it uh, is as a turning and that it's so nascent, even more challenging to just put it into a nice, neat form in a talk. But when I tried to bring it down to an essence for myself, a phrase came up for me, and that is, what's happening here matters. This captures some of the spirit of a fourth turning to me. And I'll unpack a little bit more of why that phrase came up. Um, but along with that, there are some questions. One question is, how does waking up help respond to the crises of the world? And what is needed beyond waking up? And there will be an implicit question beyond all of that. Uh, is waking up relevant at all? I think that we're all here, we feel that it is. This is one of our weeks that we're gonna be spending together. But I like sitting with these questions in an inquiry and seeing what arises. So I'm going to invite you to sit with those questions as well uh, today and throughout this training. Now, if I'm going to try to get a little bit more detailed and say something more assertively about a fourth turning, if we take an approach uh, borrowing from Ken Wilber, who we'll explore more next week, uh, he will talk about these turnings as each turning, say the second turning, for example, preserves and brings forward something really important from the first turning, but also has some negation, some criticisms of the previous turning, and then adds something new to the turning. And each turning does that, one after another. So there's a continuity throughout these turnings. And one way to create a thread to these turnings that made sense to me anyways, uh, is looking at how uh, distinctions are dealt with. So in the first turning, distinctions are really important. So uh, in trying to counteract, rectify the issue of being attached to self, distinctions are made. For example, am I my body? Am I my thoughts? Am I my feelings? Am I my habitual patterns? Who am I? And so we make these distinctions that help to start opening up our experience from being collapsed onto a self. We also have things like precepts, right ways of behaving, wrong ways of behaving. And these distinctions are meant to help support our practice of awakening. We also have distinctions like the Four Noble Truths. There's suffering, cause of suffering, into suffering, and uh, a path for awakening. In the second turning though, distinctions are dealt with differently, completely opposite direction, where basically they say, just kidding on all the distinctions. Just, you know, getting caught up in distinctions are a problem. And you have the Heart Sutra, which then says, just kidding, there's no four, no four uh, noble truths. N literally says it in there. Uh, no suffering, no cause of suffering, no end of suffering, and no path to end that suffering. Um, so basically, you know, 
one distinction or another is not going to really help or change anything. It's not going to make you more present. It's not going to make reality more real. So don't get caught up in them. And the third turning is more of an, ex it's kind of more of an extension of a second turning, but basically says, don't get caught up in not making distinctions. Don't get caught up in emptiness. Don't get so focused that you become nihilistic basically. And there begins, uh, uh, some emphasis on the potentiality, not just the nothingness, but the potentiality for everybody to awaken, Buddha nature, for example. Now, the fourth turning, I would say distinctions matter again, because what's happening here matters. And if, if waking up is not sufficient to respond to the problems and crises of the world, we have to have new ways of looking at the world. We have to have new ways of understanding the world. We have to deal with the world on its own terms. And yeah, how do we awaken in service of this world? And basically when, to say, when did this start, uh, this fourth turning is one could say when the East and the West began to merge, when the deep, contemplative traditions of the East came to the West and met the traditions of, uh, of psychology, for example, and science, these things started to intermingle and dance and all of them presenting deep truths and wisdom about our complex, rich experience as humans. And how do these all fit together? And this is a question. And this is part of the reason why we're still sitting with this in, in an emerging way. So, in a certain way, again, to summarize a little bit about these distinctions, one, we need to make better sense of the world. This is a big emphasis about a fourth turning, is how are we making sense? What distinctions can we make? How can we understand this world such that we can respond to it? And then how do we have, what and how do we practice to respond to the world? And if we're gonna have more practices in waking up, what practices should those be? And in this training, we're exploring waking up, cleaning up, growing up and showing up as categories of practice. And inside of those categories of practice, those four facets, there are a multitude of practices. But in a fourth turning uh, presentation, such as uh, from Interval, we would say, well, we'd at least need these. These seem necessary. If we leave any of these out, somehow we're gonna miss something really important. And also something that occurred to me too is that with the emergence of the Bodhisattva vow that I, I want to wake up not just for myself, but I want all beings to be free of suffering. A fourth turning response to suffering even more, including that response of waking up, the, uh, the suffering that is relinquished in waking up, but also dealing with the suffering of the world that we know we can influence and change. For example, climate change. This is something that we can look at, we can respond to specifically as a suffering of the world. And so for me, that's a continuation and an expansion of a Bodhisattva vow that we saw in a previous turning. Now, one of the ways that we can sort of outline the three turnings in, uh, in the Buddhist world, we love outlines and lists. Uh, we can talk about the when and the where and when the ideal of each turning, the core teachings and the practices. The where and when I've already kind of mentioned, it wasn't one specific person on a mountain somewhere with a group of people. This was the world coming together, becoming more global, cultures and societies interacting with each other in, in multiple traditions of wisdom and understanding and response. Um, the ideal in the three turnings was the Arhat, Bodhisattva and Buddha. For the ideal of the fourth turning, I'm not sure uh, how confident I feel in saying here's the ideal because we're all figuring that out together. But I like a quote from Ken Wilber on this, and uh, that is, the new Bo Buddha is not going to be the Sangha, but the unification of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha in a single ongoing non-dual awareness and awakening. And not getting too caught up in the specifics of that quote, but what I like about it is the sense of an integration, the integration of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, 
a sense of that we're needing a more complex and integrated response to the world. Um, again, beyond just merely waking up. In terms of core teachings, very much uh, there's not a go-to, this is the canon of the fourth turning. Um, and as we, you might've seen in the Meta Dharma guide that we have online, we listed out the sections by people, not topic, because we wanted to invite in and acknowledge how nascent this all is and how there are a lot of different people thinking about this and, and having different perspectives, different approaches, different models. And so that's really important. But if we're going to pick a category of perspectives, then um, integral meta theorists, people who are taking that kind of larger perspective uh, on the human experience in the world, that's a lot of who we are including um, in that list. But it's not an exhaustive list. And then for practices, I've mentioned waking up, cleaning up, growing up, and showing up, but also practices that integrate those. Th this is very new right now. So for example, the social noting practices that Vince has helped to uh, pioneer and innovate on is integrating. It's integrating practices of waking up, but also integrating the social relational dimension. And for example, when we do social noting, we're not just um, cultivating insights of waking up, we're also experiencing our social conditioning, our relational experiences with one another. That necessarily comes up. Um, embodiment practices have, you could say that some, though they've been around for a while, that the body has been included in the practice of Buddhism, but um, there's been sort of an explosion of embodiment practices and innovation where we are integrating multiple practices. So for example, the embodiment practice we did today can be integrated and combined with a healing practice, a therapeutic practice, all in one integral practice. So I think that's representative of what um, I've been seeing anyways in a fourth turning.